uh, competing in Brawl. And Shine, he's a player who prides himself on um, playing the rest of the cast, the, the entire cast. Lucas being one of his stronger characters and the character that he tends to play when he knows he has to respect his opponent. So here we go. Game number one, Lucas versus Pokemon Trainer. All right, let's see how this goes down. Yeah, we're on Pokemon Stadium 2, and uh, yeah, it's just <laughs> both players opening up with some light damage. Yeah, uh, always in the early percents, it's kind of difficult to know what you can do because a lot of your hits are minus on attack. Yeah. So you kind of have to just play it by ear and then catch your defensive option. Well, I like what Shinde's doing, just mixing up when he's throwing out that Zare. It does cancel his aerial momentum and brings him back down, so he can use it as a quick fastball to bring it back uh, into a better grounded position. Yeah, both players just facing each other around. So they started off by racking up this easy, quick damage. Um, but with Shine taking the lead ever so slightly, Sweet Tea is going to retreat into some Razor Leafs. And, uh, oh, oh, my God. Chains from Pink. <laughs> Shout out to Pinkfresh for discovering that yes. as far as I'm aware. That's going to be really crucial in like any matchup. You get some easy, quick damage. And the up air catching the roll on the platform. Evening out the percents here for Sweet T. Yeah, I mean, Ivysaur is one of those high damage output characters. If you blink, then all of a sudden, oh, the great parry too! But he's not gonna get a punish off of it. Yeah, he did try to chase with the up air, but it's just ever so misspaced. And uh, luckily for Sweet T, there gets up onto the stage and neutral air is gonna cover so many options right there. Uh oh, switching to the Charizard real quick, and he's gonna make it back. Gray Perry knew the timing on that throw, and he's going to get it this time. Yeah, what a proper punish right there from Sweet T. Able to secure the stock off of the parry, and now working on putting on some extra damage. Oh, the down tilt, though, looking like Smash 4. The up throw not quite going to do it. Oh, I like it. Landing with the flamethrower to get some easy damage. Parry into jabs. Oh, it looked like he tried to parry again, but uh, the neutral air, different timing that time around. But still, Sweet Tea in the advantage position, a very low risk parry to be able to continue his advantage position. All right, PK Fire is not going to be enough, but it sends him off stage. Oh, he drags him down with the two hits of down air. Uh, he actually forced Sweet Tea to do a directional air dodge, so he, he should have been able to live, but after the uh, miss input, it's going to be. Uh, not so lucky. Yeah, it's one of those pressure situations like, oh shoot, do I have to tech and you don't yeah. have to and then you're just air dodging the ground and then you're upset. Yeah, it's like a bummer, dude. Here we go, second stock, 74% on Shine, make it 85 to Sweet T's 43 and he's chasing him on the platform with these up airs. That's such a good pressure tool. PK Freeze starting to come out from Shine, not sure if that was like an actual uh, an execution error or intentional, though. Hey, man, if you get hit by kick and freeze, oh. you're, you're pretty much guaranteed oh. dead. You're just stuck in there for so long. Yeah, and then it, and maybe they can hit you with the second one. Even if you're not dead, they can yeah. shoot out the second one. So as soon as you're out of that first one, they hit you with the second one. If you're by the ledge or anywhere near the side blast zone, you're just gone. Back throw? Is that enough? Not quite. Ivy Sword's a little bit heavy. Maybe it'll score it all probably, but oh, that's yeah. not quite happening this time around. No edge guard. Not going to get that back air spike. Hanging on a little bit longer with this tether. That's going to be a re-grab. Oh my god, I can't believe he got that angle. I mean, if you want to main one of the Earthbound <laughs> characters, you got to make sure that you yeah. know all of your PK Thunder mix-ups to recover. And he did just that, able to find the right position to get straight to the ledge there. 118% on Sweet T's second stock now. Uh, he's going to keep the Charizard out for a little bit. I mean, this is the character that's considered the weakest out of the Pokemon trio. But uh, knowing that he's at a higher percent, he can use this to live a little bit longer. And if he just plays his neutral right, I mean, he's, he's going to be able to get some damage regardless. Oh, I'm not able to follow up after the Meteor. And yeah, Sweet T's Charizard are doing a fantastic job. Like, like we said before, he can kind of tank a lot of Lucas's hits that are straight oh. and might potentially kill, but he got the weaker recovery to make up for that. Yeah, not going to make it back. Ended up going a little bit too low. Uh, switching to the Ivysaur right now. Down to the last stock, and Shine already bringing it back with a single combo. Down throw, up air. Or not up air, excuse me. Up yeah, B. Vine whip, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up air into up air, that's gonna be it. Okay. Shine trailing a little bit now. Ooh, just outside of the range of that forward smash. That was uh, quite a heavy read coming out from Sweet T. 
Yeah, he was trying to pressure with a rage release and then make him think with that little short stop that he was gonna be left open for a potential damage. But Shine not taking the bait and decides to let it be, try to get that forward smash. That it? Yes, it is. And the back throw gonna do it for Sweet T, taking that game number one. Very down to the wire, though, I have to say. Shine was looking. Very promising in a lot of moments. He was getting uh, really high damaging combos um, and a lot of resets as well. So let's see if he can recreate some of that magic in game number two or if he is going to switch to a different character. This is the moment where I do see Shine switching to one of his many other characters too because he, uh, he is down a game. This is the best of three sets, so he's got one last chance to make something happen and he might opt to uh, play a better matchup or kind of throw his opponent off. Let's see. It's looking like we're going to stick to the Lucas, but potential character switch coming out from Sweet T. He does have a game to work with, so I mean, I can't blame him either for wanting to practice some of his other characters, and it is going to be Palutena, in fact. Yeah. Uh, I like what she, I like what she <laughs> now, now she needs second thinking and everything. He's yeah. like, wait a second. All right, hold I, on. Uh, in, a game, <laughs> in a game where counterpicking is much more important now, yes, your opponent or the person that wins the last game picks first. Yeah. They have a chance to switch before getting potentially counterpicked back. Yeah. And now she What is he looking up? Is he looking up Dig Dog for sense or something? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Because he does have the DK. Hey, he's going to DK, dude. Where's he going? Oh, he's Ike? going Ike? Bro, what? I mean, it's pretty uh, solid character yeah. to outrange Palatena and still get follow-ups. We'll have to see. He's thinking really hard about this, actually. <laughs> Do you see his little mouth twitch? It's like, uh, is this, is this it? Or Bowser. Okay. It looks like he, he wants a heavy. Yeah. It's going to be Ike. He wants someone with range and it. survivability. There okay. it is. He's locked in. Not totally. He can back <laughs> out. He can back out if he wants. No, no, no. <laughs> he, 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 the game has started. The decision is final. Who wants to be a millionaire? Final answer, it is the Ike. And we're on FD now. FD, and that's going to be final destination for game number two. Sweet T switching to the Palutena, as we just mentioned, and Shine with the Ike. Um, this is going to be interesting. I, I haven't seen much of either of these characters from both of these players. So. Yeah, this is going to be really strange. I mean, we, we know the Pichu is in the pocket as yeah. well, but uh, I didn't know the Palutena was here. It looks like doing a good job using Palatino's movement and pressure to be able to solicit defensive options from Shine and then continuing this aggression. And again, they're out of shield. Just make it so easy oh. to punish these sword characters as they land on your shield on the safety. Yeah, excellent counter. He has no jump here. And he goes for the immediate downer to punish that directional air dodge. That was brilliant. Because he should have still been able to make it back, even with the directional air dodge. He goes really, he's going to end up falling really low towards the bottom blast zone. but. The uh, up B does go really far. So. And I love how Sweet T's spacing around Ike's neutral airs. Using that neutral air himself and then fading back is a, okay, if Shine overcommits himself, then I'm gonna catch him, but I'm not gonna risk myself because I know I have the lead. I don't have to risk uh, this extra damage that could potentially kill me at these lo uh, lower percents because I'm a light character like Hollow Town. And uh, Shine just trying to find these neutral airs, knowing that he's going to get so much mileage from neutral airing in, uh, into neutral. Uh -huh. Back air is going to do it. A uh, bit of a ledge trap situation there for Shine. We don't see that too often, but it's going to work out this time. Yeah, back throw back air, just like Smash 4. Getting on stage one more time, and then there. Awful angle to send Ike in. This is a potential free opportunity, oh, and he gets the up no. smash. Catches Shine, trying to dash dance, play a mind game. He's like, nope, I'm just going to up smash you. You're done. Yeah, you can't play games with me, boy. You're just a boy, I'm a goddess. You haven't even gotten buff yet, dude. Yeah, you don't kill goddesses until the second game, man. <laughs> Alright, but here we go. The oh, air dude. trains. I think you tried to drag him down to potentially get a regrab and reset the situation. Not quite gonna happen. I think a big issue too is that Shine is not quite getting those nair follows. You watch a player like MK Leo play yeah. Ike. Every time he gets a nair, it's a perfect hit confirm into something. Even following the DI. There we go. Finally gonna get the falling nair into the back air. Yeah. While he hasn't been getting it, uh, these Nair follows potentially every single time. I mean, at least the single hit of the Nair is racking up a little bit more damage, and uh, eventually all it really takes is like two or three of those Nairs to, to do the stock. Yeah. Oh, up smash, catching the neutral getup on the ledge. Shine looking in a really dire situation, and Sweet T almost looking like he was about to give him a free stock. 
Yeah. That explosive flame is just unfortunate against a character like Ike because Ike is forced to use out his jump to go above it, and then he leaves him very susceptible to his high recovery. But that up air gonna be able to close it out against Sweet Team, but not without potentially putting him off stage again. And again, oh, no. like I said, the tear from the explosive flame, the jab puts him off stage. That could be it. Oh my god, dude, I can't believe it. Avoid that, and the down tilt by the ledge is gonna do the trick. Sweet T with the JVT.